Humans and nature. I have been a muse to them both. Yet they know nothing of me, of who I am, of what I love. I am a global phenomenon, a key player within the world's leading industries. Over the last few years, my friends and I have single-handedly provided this world with over 6.4 billion. 6.4 billion of what, you ask? <laughs> I knew that number would grab your attention. My skin, of course. My life. My resources. 6.4 billion tons of bovine leather. For I am a cow. I sometimes wonder, would humans look flawless, naked with zero life signs after a life well lived? Imagine you're standing in a shoe shop and you're just about to purchase that perfect pair of black leather shoes. And just as you hand them over to the cashier, you realize that one of the uppers has a scratch on them. Immediately, you believe that the product is defect and you ask for a discount. But instead of getting a discount, you get a story. You get a story about an animal, a cow, who's been able to have access to fresh water, outdoor possibilities, and being slaughtered under controlled circumstances. And these three may seem like very simple things. Nevertheless, they are not a global standard today if you are a cow. Even though between 2011 to 2013, over 6.4 billion tons of bovine leather was produced, and bovine leather stands for approximately 64% of the global leather production. You are being told that what you believe were a defect was actually a healed scar from when the cow played outside with a friend. Like you and I have healed scar on our knees from learning how to ride a bike when we were children. Would you then choose the leather footwear with or without a scratch? with or without the story of a life well lived. In 2015, I was working for the WWF. I was working as a fundraiser in Stockholm, and I was the person who was in the streets and probably approaching you and saying, hello, how many elephants have died this hour? Um, and you probably take a lot of time trying to avoid me. And I was there for three months, and it was a passion for me to work with animal protection. But what I realized was that every once in a day, a person randomly came up to me, approached me, and they say, hello, do you know that you're a horrible person? And just imagine if someone came to your office without knowing you and just saying, hey, you're an awful person. So the first time, I was so shocked, I couldn't really reply. Uh, and I was like, OK, yeah, sure, maybe I am. But then the second and the third and the tenth time, I asked, what makes me such an awful person? And then they said something that I build the whole brand upon. They said, humans are meant to work for humans. Humans are not meant to work for animals. And even though we discussed the importance of ecosystems and animals, humans, and nature living together, they did not think that animals were important for the ecosystems to function. In 2015, we also made the UN Global Goals, uh, most commonly known as the SDGs. And there are 17 global goals that focus on this planet's health and functionality and how we can make it more um, sustainable until 2030. And they are amazing goals. But have you noticed 
that neither of them say that increased animal welfare or increased animal protection are a key to sustainable ecosystems. We take the same idea of ecological and we apply it within the fashion industry. And fashion industry, as we all are aware of, is one of the largest impact industries in the world. It's the second most pollutional after oil and leather is the third most pollutional. And then we'll look at how, the, how do we work with the term of ecological leather. Ecological leather today does not have a single relationship to the life quality of the animal. It has a direct connection to the nature and the humans. The definition of ecological is, of course, animals, humans, and nature living together and coexisting in this world. So it's pretty hard to make a sustainable world if we don't include the animals. At this time, I was starting to think, OK, how can we improve global animal protection in a new way? I asked myself, if we put donations into products, will we be able to impact the industry better? In 2015, I had roughly eight years of experience working within the footwear industry, working with sales, trends, and design. And I thought, can my knowledge that I have, can it improve global animal protection? And the final question became, can footwear improve global animal protection? And I definitely think it can. And why we're applying the change within the footwear industry is because footwear is the hardest and most complex leather constructions that we have. And if we can control a leather supply chain for footwear, we can apply that change into any industry ever working within leather. We have taken nearly three years into research and development and creating, if I may say so, the safest leather footwear ever made called Andrew. Andrew is a Goodyear welted Oxford hole cut, and it is made out of a collaboration with some of the best craftsmen in the world. From Swedish farmers, Swedish slaughterhouses, tanneries in both Sweden and Italy, and also they are being handmade in Florence, Italy. What you see behind me currently is Andrew being built. All the small areas that are not filled in are different letter areas that in a Goodyear welted comes from naturally different animals. In Andrew, we have narrowed it down by restructuring the whole supply chains and the craftsmanship down to seven animals involved in one letter footwear. There are three parts of the letter uh, footwear that is not traceable, that is not coming out of um, leather. It is the reinforced metal toe that you just saw when the footwear was going on the side. It is the rubber on the heel, and it is the reinforced toe area in front of the footwear. The craftsmanship behind this footwear is made out of Stefano Bemir. It's one of the best shoemakers within the world, and he has come in with his knowledge um, actually to help how we can take basic bespoke craftsmanship and turning it more commercial. Because it's first when we use very high craftsmanship and we apply it in a commercial way when everyone comes together that we can make a change. Because we can create fantastic projects that are small, but if we can't scale the solutions, we're not making global change or global impact. What is uniquely with this footwear is that all the leather parts are uniquely traceable back to the specific animals involved. But it's not only that. It is when you, are, as a customer, receive the footwear, the footwear comes with a six-digit code on the upper of the footwear. So you, as a customer, can actually go in and check on the job that we have done. Because if we're not transparent and fully traceable, we can't really create the impact that we want. As you see here, as the footwear comes around, we will add a, a six-digit code. And that is the code that the customers enables the full traceability of the footwear.
a lot of these three years has gone into research and development into how supply chain works, how does global letter supply chains work, and how can we restructure them in order to work for first Andrew, but also on a global and more secure scale. So what I'm going to go, go through now is actually how we restructured the supply chains in order to work with this product, and then we're looking at how we can scale the solution. Normally, as a designer, you would probably go and buy a letter from a letter grossist, or you would buy where someone provides the letter with you. What we do in Yusufin Lilliqvist, whose mission is to accelerate the world's transition towards a world where all stories matter, is that we have direct connection with the farmers. So we think when, when they are slaughtering their animals, and then we buy our hides from them. It is later, later sent to the slaughterhouses, also Swedish-based slaughterhouses, so we know that we have full control of the animal's life quality throughout the whole chain. And this is actually the last time where we have control over the animal, because now it's currently turning into a hide, where we basically buy the letter. So here goes to a tannery, and depending on what we're using it for, we tan it in different ways and different methods. What happens afterwards is if we get an order, or when we get an order, um, we place the order at the tannery, and then they send it to a shoemaker that hand cuts the whole footwear, so we can then sand it down to our next construction based in Florence, Italy. That would be Stefano Bamir. But this is just for 70% of the footwear, because we only looked at the uppers of a letter supply chain here. Because we need different letters when it comes to a sole and a tanning process, and when it comes to just the upper and more details. So, for example, say we're ordering a sole instead. We then know that we need cows, and we can't use bulls for the soles that we're currently developing. So we need to then know that, OK, all of our cows that we take in are about, above um, 12 to 24 age, uh, months of age. So they will be able to have all the seasons and at least, at least have lived one year. Normally, when you buy luxury leather products today, you buy them out of calf. And calf has lived three to six months. So what we're trying to do is to prove that the life quality of the animal should be more important than just the surface of the letter as it is today. Oh, the clicker doesn't work, sorry. There we go. And then we send it down to the tannery and get the qualities within the letter that we need. When we're then producing a footwear, we send it down to the sole factory. And soles are designed with two components. We have the heel and what, then we have the sole. So we created a double chain so we can keep it fully traceable and fully structured. As everything comes together, we're now based in Italy, because they have the expertise in creating Goodyear welted leather soles. And as they come out of the construction, each leather part is uniquely coded, and then for the first time met with its upper. As the shoemakers construct the footwear after the customer, and it's then being sent back to Sweden. As it's being sent back to Sweden, we add, for the first time, the 60-digit code. And this code is an extract of all the information we have been um, collecting within the whole supply chain. And then we add it as an Andrew to be fully traceable. As the customer gets the Andrew, they log in with their unique code directly connected to their customer journey and their letter footwear's unique journey. As you log in with the code on an online login we're launching in October, uh, you will be able to access where is the information from your lining, your heel counter, uh, your sole, and so on, going through all the different seven letters in the uh, process. But this is just for us, it's for in-house. So we had to take a lot of time to structure this. How do we scale it? And that way, we need to 
look differently when it comes to supply chains. As I said before, normally as designers, we would join in the letter and just have the letter production and then talk with the customers. And in order to keep it a, a traceable supply chain, we need to add the animals as a key value. Also, what we do in the letter in the tannery is for the first time when we price the letter. It's when we price how, what the designers and what the companies are actually um, paying for in the hides. And this price is basically um, decided on the surface and where the cows are from, but basically on the surface of the letter. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to add another factor that is the key factor, and that is the life length of the animal and the life quality from its born until the time of slaughter, where we can measure everything. And how do we measure it? Well, that is the second part. We're currently developing a software system called Responsible Systems. And the importance of con uh, Responsible Systems, its mission is to keep the KPIs and the data of all the different supply chains, collect that information, and our goal is to, within five years, present a skeleton on a new global price model. So in the future, when we price letter, we price it on the life quality of the animal and not the surface of the letter as it is today. So this is when it's not in a digital sketch. Uh, I'm just rounding off, and I just want to take, thank you all for taking the time to um, listen to this and also to say, to actually quote one of my favorite um, person. It's the earlier General Secretary uh, Ban Ki-moon. To lead, we must deliver results, not mere statistics. So I think that what I hope we all can take and take with us from this is actually it's OK for letters to have defects and scratches because they're stories of life. And it's the stories of life that we should cherish, not only the quality as it is today. So we need to change the industry from within. Thank you so much. Thank you.